So I was pretty torn in terms of what to do as the surprise video in the poll. I'll show some list on screen of what I had in mind. Anyway, I decided that it'd be probably best to look back at some of my Aussie Animals videos and make a supplement to them where I correct mistakes and build upon them. I got the idea from a book I came across from 1996, which Book Depository lists simply as Dinosaurs by Donald F. Glutt, who I believe is an illustrator for franchises such as Star Wars. Dinosaurs, or Dinosaurs of the Encyclopedia as it's also known, is meant to be an in-depth book about dinosaurs according to my understanding, and since its release he's published numerous supplements that build upon it and correct mistakes. So I thought I should do the same where I release supplements of my own, where I correct mistakes in or add on to my older videos, and I thought I should start with my Aussie Animals videos. I'll also mainly be going off of stuff I've learnt from casually watching videos or reading stuff online or offline, so I apologise if there's a lack of sources. The first one I want to go over is my Parenti video, which was the first Aussie Animals video I ever made. The reason I want to go over this video is because I briefly mentioned that it has venom and I feel like I should have given a better explanation since some of you might think I'm confusing venom with some secret bacteria or whatever. According to the book Steve Backshall's Deadly 60, a friend of his known as Brian Grieg Frey was part of a study that confirmed monitors such as lace monitors, Komodo dragons and parentes do, in fact, have venom. Some of you still might be persistent and say it's bacteria that comes from scavenging carcasses that scientists are confusing with venom. To which I'll just say this. Lions, tigers, leopards, jaguars, snow leopards, brown bears, polar bears, grizzly bears, kodiak bears, hyenas, wild dogs, crocodiles, alligators, and wolves are all venomous when going by this logic. Parentes Komodo dragons and lace monitors do in fact have glands in their mouths that secrete venom which mixes with their saliva, which might explain why people think it's just a toxic bite. Though again, I should note that even though Parentes have venom, the venom isn't considered fatal to humans. I reckon Parenti venom must be like that of Komodo dragon venom, where it disintegrates flesh but isn't as powerful due to the fact that reportedly all it does is delay healing for a bit. I believe the reason why Parenti Venom isn't really strong is because, unlike Komodo Dragons, which have fairly large prey items, Parentes mainly feed on small invasive rabbits and native lizards such as fawny devils and bearded dragons. So since they've adapted to hunting small animals, Venom has kind of become more of a luxury than a necessity, since they can easily catch and kill animals straight away. I reckon you'll probably find they'll lose their venom glands entirely in the future. The next one I want to go over is my inland taipan video, which I feel like I should have put a little more work into, and I'm considering redoing it at some point. According to what I've read, inland taipans are known to be very shy in the wild and fairly tame in captivity, according to the Australian Museum's website, unlike their coastal relatives. I was going to joke around by saying that sounds like a thing to trick tourists into handling wild ones, since it's also known as the fear snake. However, a few months back I was doing work experience involving kangaroos, and one of the people mentioned their dog died after being bitten by an inland taipan. They went on to explain to me that the inland taipan got the name fierce snake, not because of its behaviour, but because its venom is so fierce and fast reacting. Also, the thumbnail of the video isn't actually of an inland taipan, but is actually a tiger snake. I didn't know this at the time because I simply googled inland taipan, saw that image, thought it looked nice, and used that as the thumbnail and didn't bother to look to see if it was an inland taipan or not. Next up is my wedge-tailed eagle video, which I'd say is my favourite Aussie animals so far. According to the Billabong Sanctuary's website, the Tasmanian population of wedgetails are considered their own subspecies, known as the Tasmanian Eagle, which are characterised by having longer talons and lighter feathers on the nape of their neck. This I find to be kind of sad, since as I pointed out in my wedge-tailed eagle video, despite what the IUCN says about them being least concern, 
They're considered endangered in Tasmania and are a protected species across all major states and territories. There are believed to be less than 1,000 left in Tasmania, with only 440 being mature individuals. This means that not only are we talking about wedge tails having a chance of going extinct in Tasmania, but we're looking at an entire subspecies going extinct. Also, on a more hilarious and light-hearted note, the mainland wedgetail eagle has the hilarious scientific name of Aquila Ordax Ordax, which I believe translates to Bold Bold Eagle. To my knowledge, you get this a lot with taxonomic naming of animals, a great example being the two main species of gorilla, which are Gorilla Barangay and Gorilla Gorilla, and then there's a subspecies of Gorilla Gorilla known as Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla, which I find hilarious, because that means there's an alternative universe where species has Gorilla repeated like a hundred times. And finally, my Eastern Brown video, where I mention that 80 to 90 or 85 to 95% of snake bites are caused from people trying to capture or kill snakes. This came from a book published in 1991 titled Australian Snakes A Natural History by author Richard Shine. The problem with what I said in the video is that, and I'm kind of getting technical here, he actually writes that over 80% of snake bites are caused from people trying to capture or kill snakes. I was just going off of memory when I said 85 to 95% or whatever. I guess I'm still kind of correct since he said over 80%, but I felt the need to mention this. Alongside this, I state that Eastern Browns travelled to Papua New Guinea via a land bridge. The source I used didn't specifically say a land bridge, meaning they could have island hopped. Another thing I should have mentioned is that Eastern Browns in captivity are known to lay a second clutch of eggs sometime after the first, meaning females are able to store sperm of males for a period of time. Inland Taipans reportedly are known to lay second clutches of eggs as well, so that's interesting. I'm guessing that since all these snakes are lapids, this applies to all lapids, meaning King Browns can do this as well. Also, as I stated in my Coastal Taipan video, males have two sex organs known as hemipenes, which are used one at a time during mating season. As I also stated in my Coastal Taipan video, this is just the case for all snakes, not just Coastal Taipans. And that wraps up this video. Next up should be the Gorilla and Kodiak Bear videos. And then after that, I'm just going to start making whatever I feel like making. So we'll see what sort of stuff I come up with. I'm thinking of going through and recording some older scripts I wrote a while ago, but never finished or recorded, such as my unfinished Salt Water Crocodile script. And another video I thought of, where I rank big cats of the Panthera family like it's a video game, but we'll see. The Gorilla video is based partially on an older script I wrote, so might as well record the others. Anyway, see you then I guess.